Yo, welcome to the Weekly Reset with Justin Newland. This is a series that will look over the previous week's worth of videos, give you something of a summary of what's been accomplished, I'll answer some of my personal answers to the daily questions, and then I'll try to give you some idea of where we're planning to go in the next week. In Pokemon Coliseum, Team Cypher took over Mount Battle. We've been fighting our way up through a number of battles in order to try to get at whichever Cypher person is behind all of this, and as we've been going up, the battles have continued to see higher and higher leveled opponents, so I'm expecting that whenever we find whoever's behind all this at Mount Battle, we're in for another very interesting boss fight. In Golden Sun, we've only just left Vale in hot pursuit of Felix and his party, and apparently we're right on their trail because in both of the villages that we've visited so far, we've heard villagers tell us that Felix and his party had only just left the village before we had arrived. In addition to our progress with the main quest line, we've also added a new party member, Ivan the Seer. His mind reading abilities came in really handy in his joining quest, and I suspect that we'll be getting no less use of those as the quest lines progress. And now for some of my answers to this week's questions of the day. The first one is going to come from the episode Mount Battle Takeover which was asking whether you preferred Flygon or Salamence. Uh, my background for that question is that in Generation 3, Salamence and Flygon are sort of set up as rivals, or not, rivals isn't the right word, but they're set up as sort of a two Pokemon pair, kind of like how Plusle and Minan and a lot of other Gen 3 Pokemon were created that way. But, whereas Pokemon like Plusle and Minan share very close base stats and are clear, much more clearly pairs, uh, Flygon and Salamence are just two dragon types that have some similarities in their rarity and strength, but those similarities end when you consider that Salamence specifically is actually a full-on pseudo-legendary due to his base stat total, whereas Flygon, while still powerful, is not quite on that same level. And part of that difference, yet similarity, is why I asked that question. And my personal answer to it has pretty much always been that, while I do like both of them, my personal favorite of the two has always been Flygon. Partially because I just like his whole line and concept a little bit better, but also because it, in Generation 3, when I first played, he was just ridiculously more accessible. So I've had a lot more experience with Flygon, and I'll admit, like a lot of people, I do enjoy a good underdog. The second question was from the episode Into the Unknown, and it was asking about whether you prefer offense or defense. Uh, this was sort of getting at an RPG concept of whether you prefer going all in really quick with a whole bunch of offensive strategies at the expense of defense versus doing a whole lot of forethought and planning and setting up your defenses and preparing more for the long game. So the actual question I was looking to ask maybe wasn't quite phrased succinctly, but ultimately I don't have just a ton of room to ask these questions in full in the overlays. Uh, as for me, my answer pretty much always ends up being offense, uh, certainly in terms of my preference. Uh, if you get into a certain RPG situation where a particular boss fight really has to be dealt with in a long-term fight, then I don't hate those bosses and I will adapt, but given my own personal druthers, I almost always go for more glass cannon type characters and for glass cannon strategies of try to land the first really big hit, leaving yourself open, but hoping that you can end it before you actually end up having to pay the consequences. Uh, suffice to say, my favoring that method does often yield me having to face those consequences, but seeing as how most RPGs involve a save mechanic, it's always just a quick reset away from retrying. Our third question is going to be, uh, what was your what do you think is the most annoying ability which came from our Trapped in the Arena episode, which was named specifically because I had a bit of a issue with getting trapped by a Trap Inches, or was it a Diglets? I know we were seeing both of those show up quite a bit, and both of them uh, can have access to Arena Trap, which I don't know that that would be my full-on answer from 
even just from Generation 3, uh, it is certainly an annoying ability. As long as the Pokémon that's out is super effective or even just competently able to match them stat-wise, switching is not that big in uh, a regular playthrough. In competitive, clearly, that ability can be kind of broken because switching is so much more a part of that meta. So when you're doing as we were doing in just a game, or a uh, regular Let's Play scenario of it, usually switching isn't going to show up too much unless, like I was, you're pretty under-leveled, so a lot of your Pokémon are not able to just tank things out and make it all the way through to the end. Uh, I think for me personally, Intimidate would have to be probably my answer. Not that I really hate it, but just that in the most circumstances, I find it the most annoying in just regular playthroughs because, again, similarly to Arena Trap, by and large, when I'm just playing through the main story, I'm not thinking about having to do a whole bunch of switching. So when a Pokemon comes in with Intimidate, that's a free stat drop that now I have to think about a part of my strategy that I typically ignore. Uh, so, like I said, it's not like it's that annoying, it's just, it definitely ends up bringing up a part of the game that, uh, typically, <laughs> in reference to my previous comment, uh, I like to just sort of keep charging ahead, and Intimidate having a free attack drop can sometimes end up sidelining that, and that can be annoying. Uh, my th next question was, what was your, uh, what overworld synergy from Golden Sun that we'd seen so far would you most like to have, which came from when we met Ivan. Uh, I was primarily asking that because I figured that for a lot of people, the idea of Ivan's mind-reading abilities would be a really interesting and fun thing to have. Uh, of the ones that we've seen so far, I think I probably still would also have to go, I mean, like I said, the reason I was asking that question was because, yeah, in that case, that probably, his mind read ability probably would be the one that I would most like. I think that the move synergy and the uh, catch ones are also pretty obviously general use, and so you'd end up with a lot of circumstances where you could use those in real life, and that would be nice. But by and large, Mind Read is one of those ones, one of the few ones that we've seen so far, anyway, that are overworld, that is just absolutely giving you an ability that, like, with Move or Catch, those are telekinesis that, sure, we don't have those in real life, but you can move things or catch things, you just require moving to them, whereas with Mind Read, there's no real equivalent there. So that one sort of seems to me like the thing that I would most enjoy from what we've seen so far. I think we get some really interesting ones later that might change that up, but of the ones we had seen up to that episode, certainly. Uh, the next question I had asked was, what's your favorite final starter, or your final stage starter? Which I was mostly just asking so that it's just, uh, like, you know, ver between Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise, rather than everything under them, including all their mid stages and base stages of all of them. And that one I did leave open, so I would have to say my personal favorite definitely has to be Delphox. I've not found it to be supremely overpowered or just great in all circumstances, but it really seems to embody that idea of full-on offense, because both Fire and Psychic are pretty good offensively, and Delphox specifically has really decent stats in both Special Attack and Speed, which, when it's the kind of strategy I use that much, that tends to be something I like. So, the final one, then, that we're going to be looking over this week was Weapons or Spells, which I asked in uh, our episode, Goma Pass. Uh... I don't know, again, I feel like that one, I didn't really phrase it quite to ask the question that I was really looking to get at. That was looking more at, do you prefer, like, uh, physical concept attacks versus special attacks? With, again, even that really needing to be caveated. Uh, in that game, like, for instance, the difference between using your synergy for spellcaster-type attacks at the cost of uh, mana, or in this case, uh, synergy, versus weapon attacks, which w I would still include things like uh, when Garrett unleashes Flint, even though he's using kind of a spell for Flint, it's still a physical attack. So that's sort of the difference that I was looking to get at. Which of those do you prefer? 
attacks that even if they're like elementally charged or whatever are still primarily you going up and hitting someone with something physically using weapons of some sort or do you prefer more you know stand back throw cast stuff in things and i would have to say maybe not specifically in golden sun in golden sun i find it to be pretty even i think that they balanced a lot of the spell casting with the weapon animations pretty well especially in the later ones uh but outside of Golden Sun, certainly, overall, I think I definitely fall into the category of preferring the spellcaster type stuff. Admittedly, in part due to the fact that not every game really well balances the differences between animations for casts versus, like, weapon attacks. So sometimes weapon attacks can end up looking kind of dull while spells get all the really cool effects. And that has something to do with it. But even in a game where, like Golden Sun where things are a lot more balanced, my mindset, again, of being far more all-in damage, let's get it done now and leave ourselves kind of open, I still kind of prefer doing that with spellcasting rather than melee concepts, partially because in the idea of, like, a spellcaster doing that is hypothetically still someone, you know, doing it from range so the enemy still has to come to you, whereas if it's a melee class doing that sort of thing, conceptually anyway, you're really putting yourself in danger if you're going all-out offense and you're right next to them. So, anyhow, that'll be uh, my answer to that final question. And now, to give you a bit of an idea of where we're going to be going in the next week, as I mentioned in the summary part about Pokemon Coliseum, we're still fighting our way up the Team Cypher-controlled Mount Battle. Because I haven't played this game before, I don't actually know how many more battles are ahead of us, so technically it is possible that next week, come review time, we may still be talking about us being on Mount Battle. But I certainly hope not, and I assure you, one way or the other, we will be significantly further ahead of where we are now. As for Golden Sun, we just entered Bilbin Village, and at the very entrance, we noticed a tree that looked like a man, and according to the villagers, it had been a man that was suddenly cursed into a tree based on some village off in the wilds. So, if memory serves, I think that's the next side quest that's going to be taking command of the series, and that should at least last for two or three episodes if my memory serves about how long that side quest ends up being. Well, combined with depending on, you know, how long it actually takes us to go through all the puzzles and fights. And so, that's where we've been, what some of my answers are, and where I think we'll be going. So, we'll see you here for the next review next week, and until then, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Yo! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and leave a comment so I know you want more videos like this. If you want to know when new uploads arrive, subscribe and hit the bell icon to have YouTube send you a notification. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.